Well, we have definitely reached the dog days of summer, but we also know that things never really slow down in the world of college athletics. We had a migration day at the start of July, and now we are heading full force towards the launch of the new look 16-team Big 12 Conference. We go back to campus today right here on Locked on Women's Basketball. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, friends. It is July 15th, 2024. It is probably really warm wherever you are. So I hope you are staying cool, watering your plants, and please just do not look at your AC bill. I am Missy Heydrich, National Correspondent here at The Next. Thank you for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we really want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Well, no matter how hard we try, July just never really seems to be a dull month in the world of college athletics. Big news, big moves. They have captured the headlines for summer months for many years. This summer, it has been moving time and unveiling a new look power conferences. Today, we are going to dive into all things related to the new look Big 12 Conference, turning our spotlight not only on how to this league has gotten to the point where it is, especially in the world of women's college basketball. And it is so exciting for me today to have the person that is in a newly formed leadership position that focuses on Big 12 women's basketball, someone who has been with this league now for over 22 years, Dana Scharf, the newly appointed Vice President of Women's Basketball and Championships. Dana, welcome to Locked on Women's Basketball, the middle of July and I know sometimes it feels like time does not stand still. And I'm sure that is how it has been for all of you. Yes, it's yeah, it's been nonstop for ever, ever since. Well, for the 25 years I've been here, but um, <laughs> especially the last four years have been been crazy. Um, but we are super excited about a 16 team league officially unveiling on August 2nd. Well, that, I want to go back a little bit because I think about this like about four years ago, uh, we were all watching the Olympics and, you know, thriving and gymnastics and swimming and track and field. And then all of a sudden the news drops and we, Texas and Oklahoma are going to head to the SEC. And, at, and the commissioner at the time, Bob Bowlesby, went on the offensive um, really to keep this league together, added four teams. And then we saw the change that came last summer. Um, as part of this Big 12 leadership team, I'm sure it has felt like there really has never been any stable ground over the course of the past few years. But now, as you sit here, how exciting and how maybe reassuring is this time here for this league as you move forward in the position that the Big 12 is in? Yeah, it's really exciting. I mean, we've we've built ourselves and, and Commissioner Yormark has done a great job in making us the best version of ourselves. And we grew to a 14 team league and now a 16 team league. And it's, it's an exciting time just to see how things have changed. The landscape has changed and just really looking forward to our future. Well, and I think that's my next question because we are in this ever changing concept. I mean, I feel like every few weeks there's something different that's going to be happening in the world of college athletics, whether it's basketball or football or track, it doesn't matter. Um, and a lot of people have said that your now current boss, Commissioner Brett Yormark, that he has really been on the on offense since the day he stepped into that role down there at the Big 12. How important has his vision and creativity been when we start talking about the things, sort of those buzzwords, you know, long term viability and value? How key has that been? Yeah, he's he's really stretched us to think differently which I think has come at really a critical time for us to where we have to reimagine what we do and, and how we do it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been a really a great aspect that he's brought to us and just individually in all of our roles. You know, how do we think outside the box? You know, what do we do differently that maybe hasn't been done before? Uh, so it, it's a fun, uh, fun way and it's a great opportunity for us to 
find new ways to tell the stories of our student athletes as well. No doubt. Um, there's been a reorganization of sorts this summer um, under Commissioner Yormark there at the league office. Your position, which we'll dive into in a little bit um, more, but also some other long-term and long-time veteran administrators. Lisa Peterson, who has chaired the NCAA Women's Basketball Selection Committee the last two years. She was on this podcast with me last season. New voices, new experience at the table as you said, you look at August 2nd, and that is launch day of this new look Big 12. Um, what's the mo what's the thing you're looking most forward to as you think about these new people coming to the table, but then also what August 2nd really means? Yeah, I mean, I'm super excited about Lisa joining us. Um, that is a, a huge, she just brings so much to the table for us, not only in the basketball aspect, um, where we'll be obviously co collaborating on all things women's basketball, but just from all Olympic sports standpoints and, and her campus experience is phenomenal. So super excited uh, for her to join us. And she actually started July 1st and is on board and already hitting the ground running. Um, but it's just, it's exciting because this August 2nd marks the beginning of the future for us really. And with these 16 teams and the, the newest four um, coming in and learning those, those uh, coaches and administrators and players. It's 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 a fun time and new sports even because we're adding uh, lacrosse and beach volleyball. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of new exciting things that that are just really um, kind of rejuvenating and reinvigorating. One of the other things that I noticed and that it was announced, I think, during um, a week ago is Big 12 football media days in Las Vegas. Obviously, so much buzz created in that instance. But one of the things that was announced and came out of that was the Big 12 Alumni Council. And so two former student athletes from all 16 institutions put on this council. I know there were a lot of uh, very well-known former women's basketball alumni that are on that list as well. Can you just talk a little bit about maybe the concept behind that and where and how that can help drive, whether that's message or concept or ideas, that these are people outside your office, but yet have a vested interest in this league and in these programs? Right. It's, and we've had great success with our business advisory board, which is a similar concept, but those in, in business. Mm -hmm. And that has really been a great sounding board and, and a great genesis for, for new ideas for us. So we're looking forward to the alumni council to do similar things and really focus more so maybe on the student athletes and um, just those new ideas that, that they can bring and, you know, how we're perceived, what are different things we want to try, what's the messaging out there. And as you said, there's two from each school. Mm -hmm. um, it can be any sport, but it turns out we have, I think it's nine women's basketball players and some some pretty in incredible names, um, including Lynette Woodward, uh, Georgianne Wells, Shelly Sheets, you know, it, it goes on and on. Mm -hmm. um, but just, I'm really excited to get engaged with, with those um, members of the Alumni Council and see what ideas they want to bring to the table. And I know with that business council as well, it's sometimes about not only thinking about the present, but thinking forward and looking ahead. As you do that, not only with an alumni council or your business council, what are some of those things that people outside are telling you all, hey, these are ideas, these are concepts, or is there something that's striking you that's sort of an underlying message that says, you know what, those of us here at the league office, we really got to take this one to heart. Yeah, I think one thing that we really want to focus on is, is storytelling. Um, you know, I feel felt like we got to the NCAA tournament last year. You know, we go 7-0 in the first round, which third time in four years we've done that. But all of a sudden it's like, hey, this Big 12, they're, they're pretty good. You know, why haven't I heard about them? So I think that is something that we really need to focus on during the season. Mm -hmm. um, how do we get our story out better? How do we, you know, the stories of our individual student athletes as well as the teams mm -hmm. um, and just make it, it more widely known, like how good we are. And, and even attendance wise, one thing um, with our 16 teams this year, seven of them averaged over 5,000 in attendance last year. So it's just, you know, this momentum that's, that's building and just, trying to keep that momentum going. Mm -hmm. No, that makes a total sense. And that is a great segue because when we come back, we are going to dive in with Dana. We're going to specifically talk about this new position and how it translates into all of the crazy things that are happening around us in the world of college sports. Well, I love sports and I love them that it's hard to stop watching. We know there's so much to do, but as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games. And so the sports aren't sporting like we necessarily want them to. 
But at FanDuel, it could keep the sports going whenever you want. All you have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime you are in the mood. P.S. The Home Run Derby at the MLB All-Star break, that is on Tuesday. I'm in Kansas City. We are big Bobby Wood Jr. fans here, folks, so check those odds. This summer, FanDuel is cooking, is hooking all customers up with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. And also I have a message from our friends at Magic Spoon. They are a great supporter of those of us here at Lockdown Women's Basketball. So growing up, cereal is a big deal for all of us. But as you get older, you got to watch out for all the things like sugar and empty carbs, the things the doctors tell you to. But now Magic Spoon has amazing flavors that you will love. High protein, less sugar. There is a variety pack, four flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. It has zero grams of sugar. 13 to 14 grams of protein, four to five grams of net carbs, and only 140 calories per serving. It's high protein, low sugar, keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free. Huge favorites in my house, the cocoa and the frosted. There are empty boxes all around. So go to magicspoon.com slash locked on to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code locked on to check out to save $5 off your order and also know that magic spoon is so confident in their product it's backed by a 100 percent happiness guarantee so if you don't like it for any reason they'll refund your money no questions asked start your day off right a delicious bowl of high protein cereal at magicspoon.com slash locked on and use the code locked on to save five dollars off Hi, everybody. I am Missy Heydrich, and welcome back here to Locked on Women's Basketball. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume sometimes with all the shouting? Well, make the switch to Locked on Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV's channel app, Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, I am here with Dana Scharf. She is the newly appointed vice president for women's basketball and championships at the Big 12 Conference. And as we said, their new day of the Big 12 is on August 2nd. Dana, let's dive in and let's talk about basketball because I feel like this is the fun part right here. All right. Now, your job description when this position was announced by the commissioner, it was simple, but I thought very direct and easy to understand. Quote, focus on exclusively overseeing women's basketball and its growth trajectory. As you hear that and then say, okay, how am I going to apply this to like an everyday job? This position has existed in other leagues. Why was now the time for it to be front and center for the Big 12? I, I think really it's the growth of it. Um, and as you said, the trajectory of it, it's it's a really exciting time right now in, in women's basketball as well as across many women's sports. And just to have a more fo focused lens, I mean, basketball obviously is a year round activity now. Um, and there's, so there, it needs a little bit more attention than probably I could have provided it before. Right. Um, overseeing basically 23 of, of 25 sports. So um, it's just a great time to think every day, okay, how do we elevate the Big 12 women's basketball brand? Um, you know, in social, how do we tell our storylines? How do we, create contents and new collaborations. Um, just just really, how do we create more memorable experiences too for our student athletes? We, it would be hard for anybody if you, I mean, you have to be living under a rock if you don't understand and see the growth of women's basketball it, it, over the course of the past few years. And so we all hear about those terms. We're going to use, you know, value and all of that. And there's a lot of conversation about that, what drives it in the market with television partners, et cetera. What is your focus at the conference level when it comes to women's basketball and making sure that 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 this sport is front and center in having those conversations with partners and saying this is true value for what you want to do now and going forward? Yeah, I think the conversation is a lot easier now. Um, I think the metrics are showing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, our linear viewership was up 111 percent year over year this past season. Our championship viewership was up 58 percent year over year. Um, so it's it's easier to, now to have those conversations than they were, you know, five, 10 years ago. Um, you know, we have we're we have a, a 
dedicated social, digital social sponsor in all state of women's basketball that sponsors all things women's basketball for us. Um, so just those new things that have come on board, um, just people are easily seeing, seeing the value of, of uh, you know, women's sports right now. As you spent, you have, I mean, for many years, you have been, um, you know, overseeing women's basketball along with all sorts of other sports at the league office. Now it's much more of a focused effort for you. But as you spend time with the Big 12 coaches, um, what are you hearing from them in terms of maybe the challenges that they're still facing, whether it's on their campus or, and how can the conference factor into navigating through some of those? Yeah, I mean, there's obviously a lot, a lot going on legislatively, you know, promotionally. Um, I think the biggest thing that we heard from our meetings from them again was what we talked about earlier and just getting our story out, making it more widely known nationally. Um, so we have, you know, unique challenges in that, but also opportunities. Um, and that, and Commissioner Yormark mentioned a couple of things at Football Media Day that women's basketball will certainly take advantage of. Mm -hmm. um, one is tune in radio, and another is a development of a fast channel as we explore those options. So um, just creating those new opportunities, um, you know, is, is paramount for our league. You're adding four new teams and all who have had high levels of success in women's basketball historically over time um, may not necessarily have been in the last year or so, but you look at that in Arizona, Arizona State, in Colorado, a former Big 8, Big 12, now back to the Big 12 partner, um, and then Utah as well coming on. What strikes you about these four women's basketball programs specifically coming into the fold? Well, one, it's all, all of them are very exciting to be part of the Big 12 moving forward. Obviously, Colorado is back, as you said, um, which, which is great. Um, obviously, they've been to, to two Sweet 16s the last two years. Um, and just, I mean, the, the group of coaches amongst those four schools is an, is an incredible addition to our league. I felt like we've always had really strong coaching and they just add to that. Um, and a lot of those teams really have had a lot of Big 12 players on their roster, either that transferred from the Big 12 there or yeah. you know, vice versa. Arizona in particular, the last few years have, has had a lot of former Big 12 players. So maybe in a way they've already kind of <laughs> been part of the Big 12. Um, but just the, the new styles and the new coaches, the new fan bases, um, we're just really excited about those. Let's talk a little bit about the Big 12 championship in Kansas City. Um, it, for the first time in 2024, it came to the T-Mobile Center in downtown Kansas City, the same arena that the men's tournament has been played at for many years. Um, we all love Municipal Auditorium. I'm a huge fan. I was there when it all started. I date myself now, obviously. Um, but making that move over there, I know there was a lot of conversation about equity and just doing that, but also putting women's basketball on a different platform um, showcasing it in that manner. What kind of feedback did you all get about this first time championship at T-Mobile? And, and what did, you know, what changes or things do you think you might see going forward? Yeah, we received incredible positive feedback about the move. Um, just very well received. Um, our attendance was, was really good. We obviously always want to improve that. Um, we are talking about some different things for the upcoming year. Mm -hmm. I can't, and not say those right now, but I mean today, um, but there will hopefully be a little wrinkle um, for next year that we'll announce later. Mm -hmm. um, but just, and again, that's made in an attempt to um, continue to promote our students on a bigger platform, a bigger stage. Um, so it's some things that we're really excited about. Good, good. Well, I know it seemed as though, I mean, just from sort of the buzz and it created an even longer time frame. I mean, I think the, the, the feedback from just the general Joe fan and people that you heard of. And obviously I live here in Kansas city, but it, it seemed as though people were talking about basketball earlier in the month of March, all in a later because they, they kind of connected the women's and the men's tournament into a, a fan friendly scenario where everyone could be involved for a much longer period of time. Yeah. I mean, we would basically take over Kansas city for, you know, 10 day period or whatever that is. Um, so it, it's great. It's uh, Kansas City is a great host. Uh, T-Mobile Center is a great venue and our fans loved it. Heard a lot of positive things from them as well. Um, just more offerings and, and things like that. So um, we're really looking forward to continuing to build on that moving forward.
Well, and also just as a tip of the hat to Kansas City and what it does for women's sports specifically, if I'm not mistaken, that the 2024 soccer women's soccer championship will be played at the new Casey Current um, Stadium here in Kansas City. Is that right? Yes, uh, CPKC. So we are super excited about that. I just I get goosebumps thinking about it. Um, and that venue is also hosting the end of NWSL championship um, that was recently announced. So. Um, just an incredible venue, incredible city, and incredible supporters. Yeah, they we do. I think women's sports, they do pretty darn good in this part of the country, mm -hmm. and especially in Kansas City. All right, when we come back, more with Dana, and I want to talk specifically about some of the things moving forward. We've had seen changes just announced from the Women's Basketball NCAA Selection Committee and how all of those things fit into this new role with the Big 12. Well, first, a message from our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions do apply. eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. Hi, everybody. Missy Heidrick here on Locked on Women's Basketball. Thank you for joining us. And so happy to have the Vice President of Women's Basketball and Championships for the Big 12 Conference, Jana Scharf. And Dana, August 2nd is a big day because that is when the big, the new look Big 12 will officially be who you are and headed towards and, and speeding down fall sports and everything. And then it will be the basketball season. So you mentioned it earlier that this is a conference last season, seven teams in the NCAA tournament. Uh, two of them made it to the Sweet 16. Also had Utah, Colorado, and Arizona, who were also all in the NCAA tournament, new teams coming to this league next month. As you look at your role and think about it, you've mentioned storytelling, just kind of sharing the message about Big 12 women's basketball. But what do you see your role will be throughout the season in terms of advocating for teams, making sure the selection committee is putting their eyes on these 16 squads? Yeah, I mean, one part of that is we have weekly or not weekly, um, roughly monthly calls with, with committee, our assigned committee members. Uh, to tell them about or talk about our team. So that's that's one way. And those conversations are it, it's great because we have so many good teams to talk about and, and put on the put on the board, so to speak. Um, but yeah, just continuing that, expanding that network and, and that those talking points. I mean, last year we had for most of the year, all 14 of our teams were in the top 100 of the net. Mm -hmm. um, I think the final net, it might have been the top 101, but obviously right there. Um, which is pretty incredible for a league of our size. Uh, so just continuing to get those message points out, not to only our assigned committee reps, but other committee folks, um, sort of the talking heads in the industry that, that talk about the bracket all the time. So um, that, that's always a point of emphasis. Well, and I think it's really interesting because you mentioned the net, and I know this past week there has been um, some new information that's come from this year's, the 24-25 NCAA Women's Selection Committee. They've made some changes in how they're going to manage, I guess, team sheets, and we'll get to that in a second. The first one is, which I think is exciting, and I think fans will like this because it will mirror what the men do on their selection, is that the entire 68-team seed list will be announced in order that when the bracket is announced on Selection Sunday, you will see one through 68. Um, as someone who's been around this a lot in an administrative role, you also have experience in the media relations side of the house. How do you see that? Is, is I think I think fans might be excited about it. Is that something that's a big deal to coaches and administrators? I think it will help explain why teams go certain places because I think the committee has been ham, kind of hamstrung a little bit when they're trying to explain, you know, maybe why in Iowa and LSU are 
you know, in the same bracket or, or such, same yeah. quadrant, but uh, they can't really say this this season <laughs> and exactly where it fell. So I think this right. will, will lay that out, be very transparent. I think it will give a lot of fodder to the public and mm-hmm. and analysts to say, you know, to pick apart. Um, but you know, that's that's part of the fun of it, I guess. You know, get everybody involved in, in their own opinion. So I think I think it will be a, a good move moving forward. I think mm-hmm. that, again, the transparency is, is always good. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'll still do the, also the you know last four out, um, last four in, um, and do that alphabetically though, and not. I think that might be slightly different than the, the men. Mm-hmm. Um, and doing it alphabetically, but um, it will be greater transparency, which which will be a good thing. Well, and like you said, just kind of adds to the fodder in the March Madness scenario that we all like to, you know, and then everybody can read into it what they want. Um, one of the other things that has come is uh, somewhat similar to what the men have done in the past, but yet still different, mm-hmm. is that there will be quadrants now that will be placed in terms of wins, quad one, quad two, quad three, quad four. The women's side will be a little different, though, because those numbers will be based off a home away neutral range, which is unique to the women's basketball selection criteria. I think it's one question that has always come up, and I really would like your take at the league level in terms of talking to your coaches, talking to the administrators on these campuses about scheduling and about what they've got to do sometimes to help themselves. How do you go about that? And now as you see some of these changes here within how the net will be used, does that conversation change? Yeah, that's why we have a scheduling expert (laughs) on (laughs) retail. But we do have those conversations and obviously a lot of your, you know, your metrics are out of your hand because it's how your opponents do and your opponents. So um, that is a a conversation that we have with our our scheduler who um, is phenomenal at at this, sort of thinking and that's one that we'll continue to have especially as as you know things change a little bit Mm -hmm. one of the other things that is going to be a change from the women's selection committee is is that they have removed conference record and non-conference record as specific selection criteria and the underlying thought behind that is is that they've noted that the overall record is inclusive of this information which kind of makes sense so i think we've probably all sort of saw it that way sometimes hard to delineate a non-con versus a conference record. Any pushback, any consternation from coaches or administrators about that change, you think? Or does that seem pretty straightforward? Yeah, I think it seems straightforward, especially for a league like ours. I think it's helpful um, because you're you're playing a a tough league and you could be a team that's about 500 in the league, but you could Mm -hmm. still be one of the top teams in the country. Um, So I think that takes away that kind of eye test part of it. Um, so I, I think it'll be a, a good move for us. As you look forward um, and, and see how we know that television partners and all of that is a big piece of this, um, you know, the growth of it, uh, the Big 12 with their partnership with ESPN Plus and a lot of games that are on, how important is it not only for fan bases and but just for people that are part of that selection committee or others to be able to get their eyes on these teams as much as humanly possible throughout the course of the season. How big are those television partners in your both short-term and long-term planning? Yeah, I mean, it's huge. It's like your window to the world, really, with the TV partners. And and we have two great TV partners in ESPN and Fox Mm -hmm. um, with a lot of our games, as you mentioned, on ESPN+. Um, And it is really important for, you know, folks, particularly the selection committee, to, to get the eyes on, on other teams. Uh, just because of the, the style that we play, uh, we have so many different styles in our league. Um, you know, I think West Virginia surprised a lot of people last year in the tournament because people hadn't watched them play before. Um, so uh, the more you can see our teams, I think it's the better for the selections. And I know the announcement has been made about conference opponents um, and that there are some home and homes and that there are some that it, teams that are, they'll just play each other once a year. Um, as you look forward, there are some great, still some very good rivalries in this league. You know, obviously we've lost Bedlam with Oklahoma leaving and that Oklahoma, Oklahoma State doesn't exist. But yet you've got K-State and KU. You've got Iowa State, who's been a great challenge for everyone. Colorado coming back in. I think about BYU and Utah now and Arizona, Arizona State. What kind of that, what, what sort of excitement can that do and build for this league? 
yeah, I mean, it's great. We do have those those rivalries that you mentioned, and um, obviously there'll be new ones as well. Um, I feel like a Colorado K-State could be coming on after last year's NSA tournament. Really true. Um, but yeah, it, th those are great. I mean, they just highlight the league. You know, people get a little bit more amped up for those games. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they're terrific. And to still have that many of them is great. And those were obviously built into the scheduling process with the two plays. Um, this year, we have three teams that uh, each school plays twice. Last year, it was five. So um, a little bit more balance from the coaches' eyes in that regard. But for the large part, those are those are uh, still regional and those are the rivals. Um, it does stretch out for little schools just to try to balance uh, competitiveness as well, though. Mm -hmm. No, and I think balance is going to be huge. This could be a league from top to bottom that will be incredibly, incredibly balanced. And I think we're going to see some fantastic matchups over the course of time. Well, my last question to you, Dana, would be this. Um, I know after all of the craziness that you guys have seen, maybe over the course of the last few years, uh, and all the changes and all the things, August 2nd is a huge day for the Big 12 Conference and its new look league. But what are you individually most looking forward to in this new role that you have there at the Big 12? To, to really dive in on women's basketball. I mean, that's that's the most exciting part to me is just to, you know, work on that, you know, every day and, and just try to work with the other departments. Obviously our staff has increased tremendously uh, since Commissioner Yormark came on board. So um, just tying those departments together and pulling out the best from everybody and, you know, putting that toward, toward women's basketball. And of course our other sports as well. Um, but for me personally, the, the women's basketball aspect. Yeah, well, it couldn't be a better time. And I think um, I know there's been a lot of folks, myself included. I was hoping that this position would come because it always has seemed like this is a league that can absolutely stand on the shoulders of women's basketball. And I know I, along with a lot of others, very excited to see it happen because I think it's a long time coming and um, couldn't come at a better time when you add the four programs that are headed over to this league. And it's going to be um, pretty darn exciting 24-25 season. I know a lot of people are looking forward to it. Yeah. Yes, it will be extremely exciting. Um, I would expect we'll probably have six teams in the top 25 to start. Um, so can it be happier? Yeah, well, October will be here before you know it. And so <laughs> I hope that you have a little bit of respite and so appreciate you giving us your time here on Lockdown Women's Basketball. It's great to have you and to share your insight about where you all have been and where the Big 12 is going. And August 2nd is going to be a really, really good day. Do we get, I mean, is there going to be, I know a lot of other places have done it, but I'm assuming on August 2nd, I mean, we're going to get new videos, new stuff, all of the things, right? It's you'll see stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. All right. That's it, everybody. That's the only that's the only preview we are getting from Dana, but that's okay because we're gonna take it and know that August 2nd is is the big day. Thank you, Dana. I really do appreciate your time and um again look forward to seeing you throughout the course of the season. Yeah, anytime. Thank you. Well, thank you. And thank you guys, everybody, for listening and for watching. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter at Missy Hydrick. Be be sure to follow this podcast at Locked On WBB, and then go see all of my amazing colleagues over at thenexthoops.com. We've got you covered, WNBA, International. The Olympics are just a couple weeks away, and there will be no craziness in college athletics, or so I hope. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Thank you, everybody. Have a fantastic week. Stay cool and come back and see us often.